So what is a CRADA and should you consider using one? Well, stick around and we're going to talk about that on tonight's episode. But first, good evening, Agile Acquisition Enthusiasts. Welcome back to the Underground Digital Tiki Bar. It's Friday night, and that means it's time for another episode of Agile Acquisitions and Alcohol. Cheers. On tonight's episode, I have an unusual beverage, mixed beverage here, which is a Jack Frost in honor of this week's snow uh, event. So it's a little sweet, but good. I feel like I should be in a tiki bar. So we're in the right place in the right time. So in tonight's episode, we're talking about CRADAs. What is a CRADA? A CRADA is a Cooperative Research and Development Agreement. And remember, an agreement, as I've said in previous episodes, is when is different from a contract because there isn't consideration being given by both parties, I meaning they haven't obligated themselves to deliver one thing or another. But that doesn't mean there isn't a bunch of rules and processes and procedures that go into it. But a cooperative research and development agreement is an agreement between a lab or a government entity and typically a vendor. And there's a lot of good reasons why you would use a cooperative research and development agreement. From a vendor's perspective, you get access to resources, things that you just couldn't get access to without having some sort of relationship with the government. And that can really help you improve the quality of a capability or flush out uh, research into a new technology that can position your company very strategically for future opportunities with the government or commercially. I'm gonna lay out six benefits of working with the government under a cooperative research agreement. The first, facilities. When you're working under a cooperative research and development agreement, you can get access to existing R&D facilities within the government, some labs and their technology, and oftentimes some of the capabilities that they've built that, that align with what you're trying to develop. Number two, contracts and relationships. When you're doing a CRADA, you get access to government people and build out a network of individuals that are like-minded and trying to solve similar problems. And oftentimes as part of your research, you can identify specific programs that are looking uh, to invest in that technology or technology that solves that, that problem. Three, intellectual property. This is a benefit, but also one of the challenges of CRADAs. Uh, intellectual property does oftentimes get developed under a CRADA. And while the, the collaborator or the person, the, the entity that's working with the government uh, generally gets first right of, of patenting ownership, uh, they often also have to provide, a, a provide government purpose rights to the government for them to reuse for non-commercial purposes, which can complicate selling that technology to the government in future instances. Depending on how your company intends to use whatever the outcomes or the outputs of the CRADA really does have to weigh into how you negotiate those intellectual property rights when you're setting up the initial CRADA. Number four, innovation. Under a CRADA, you have the opportunity, like I mentioned, to leverage existing technology that the government has already researched and developed. And it also gives an opportunity to correspond and, and work with experts in the field, which can help spawn new ways to think about solving that problem and ways that are gonna be most meaningful to the group you're hoping to deliver it to. Number five, pooling talents. As I mentioned, bringing resources together, bringing like minds and, and, and experts in the field, experts and operators in the field. When you're selling to the government, you have a unique access to, or unique opportunity to get access to the users that are going to be very specialized, as, depending on which government agency you're working with. So having access to them under the CRADA before you're attempting to sell it to them gives you a competitive advantage in building something that's going to be most appropriate for their specific use cases. And number six, it's confidential. So you can work under this agreement and not have to worry about giving out uh, proprietary information or trade secrets or things that you don't want your competitors to know. You can work under a non-disclosure agreement with the government and both parties will be obligated to uh, protect the information. 
So those are six reasons why it's really good for industry. Why is it good for the government? Well, there's a couple of reasons. A lot of them reflect what's good for industry, of course, but it's also an easier way for the government to work with a vendor. So you don't necessarily have to go through the traditional acquisition pathways to form a creative. You can simply identify a vendor that you want to work with uh, and implement a Kratom because there's not money involved, so you're not subject to the Competition and Contracting Act, and therefore you have much more flexibility in how and who you work with. So it, it tends to be a lot more straightforward pathway to getting someone in the door and starting to understand what they can do for you. The acquisition process that, that does surround a Kratom still involves generally some sort of overarching Kratom, the actual agreement itself, and then oftentimes it will also include individual work plan, which is also called an IWP and is essentially the requirement stock for the specific activity or the specific work you're going to do. Within that IWP, it'll lay out very clearly what resources is the government going to bring to bear and what resources is the contractor going to bring? What are the benefits to both parties? What's the intended outcome? And yes, of course, that's where you're going to have to work out the ownership of the intellectual property. So there you have it. Uh, that is an overview of a Kratom. Hopefully you found this useful and insightful. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel so you can keep getting updates when new videos come out. Send me topics you're interested in. I'm happy to make videos specifically for what's challenging you. And until next week, cheers.